Good morning, everyone. How are you doing today? Thank you for joining us for our first webinar in our new LG Solution Spotlight webinar series. Uh, I am your host, uh, Slash MC, and presenter today, Stephen Blount, and I am so happy to be joined with our very own LG sales engineer extraordinaire, Chris Martell. Chris and I will be walking you guys through um, our presentation today. Um, Chris will be hitting on our new video wall, which is our VH7B video wall. And I will also be walking, us, walking you through our small format display monitor, which is our new 27-inch NC67, which is our new 4K monitor, small format monitor. So um, thank you so much for everyone joining us on time. Uh, just so you know, we will, well, not we will, but we are recording this webinar. And so this will be available for those that aren't able to join us but uh, definitely wanted to but couldn't, and so we will be able to provide that to them. It will be posted on our website, and we'll also share it back to you uh, after this webinar. So without further ado, we will go ahead and get started. Okay. So Here's our agenda for today. As I mentioned, uh, we'll be going through uh, the video wall. But before that, you know, tell you a little bit more about uh, LG. Uh, maybe you know about us a little bit. Maybe you don't. And so we'll, we'll just share a little bit about us. And then uh, from the video wall, we'll go into our 27-inch small format monitor. And then that will be it. So uh, we're hoping to have you guys out here about uh, between 30 and 40 minutes. And, uh yeah, it should be a, a good old time. So let's go ahead and get going. So hopefully, as I mentioned, you know, you guys aren't not um, that you're not familiar with us, but maybe you don't know about us a little bit. Um, so some of the things that we would be more than happy to share with you on is our wide array of different product solutions that we have available. We cover all of the verticals that you see in front of you right now, from retail, QSR, then also government, education, and corporate. So we want we make sure that we we have a wide array of product solutions for our customers, and that's why we have a, a vast product lineup. Um, now, some of the things that you'll see, you know, we'll have different uh, names of our product models, as just as any manufacturer would. Um, and we are trying to make things a little bit easier and, and um, for you to remember. For an example, our new video wall, we are calling that our Clover model. It is a VH7B, but we have tagged it with the name of Clover. Now, what actually makes us so special? Well, one of the things that is definitely one of our number one differentiating uh, technologies that we have in each and every one of our monitors, and that is our IPS technology. Our IPS technology, you can find that, as I mentioned, in, in I would say 99%. There, there's a couple of our monitors that we, we don't have the IPS technology, but 99% of our monitors has this IPS technology. And uh, this IPS technology, what it does for us, it gives us one of the number one super wide viewing angles. Now, some of you might say, hey, well, you know, why viewing angles okay? That's generally, isn't that with everyone? Well, actually, that's not the case. We have a super wide viewing angle of up to 178 degrees. So you can, and it's very important in the commercial space, because when you're walking actually by uh, one of our monitors that's out in the retail space or wherever it may be, it gives you, gives the end user more time to deliver a message to their actual customers that are walking by. So we're talking about a good three to five seconds that that message is being able to be able, excuse me, be able to be conveyed off to the customer that is walking by, which is very important. Um, so you got that. Now, color accuracy. Well, of course, you want to make sure that you have a beautiful picture. And that's what we absolutely do with our monitors, with our IPS technology. 
you have a beautiful picture with great color accuracy. And then also let's talk about how there's a stabilization with the actual monitor. Our monitors, you can actually go up to our monitors and tap on our screen, and you will not have any distortion whatsoever on the screen. As you'll see in that bottom right-hand corner there, you won't have any of that uh, image distortion as you may see in other um, spaces. Now, you might be thinking, well, why would you ever touch a monitor like that? Well, often you'll see this in a retail space. I myself, I have four children for, ranging from the ages of almost five to 11 years old, and as much as I tell them not to touch things, they tend to touch things from time to time. So this is why, uh, and that's just one of the reasons why it would be important, but there are just a variety of reasons why that is such a great advantage with our IPS technology. So, of course, we feel great about our IPS technology, but, you know, it's not just us and our customers saying it. It's other manufacturers, even some of our competitors, that they have also said, you know what, LG, you do have great technology and that IPS technology. We would love to take some good use of that technology and put it into some of our products. So some of these great brand names that you see here on the screen also have bought into our IPS technology. So, you know, of course, we're a little bit biased, but uh, now with you also seeing that our competitors and, and some of our partners are saying the same thing, uh, it holds a little bit more uh, credence there. All right. Well, with all that being said, you know, I definitely gave you a little bit about LG, but now we have the professor, Mr. Chris Martell himself, will now take this away in, with our video walls of the VH7B. Chris, are you there with me? I'm here, Stephen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to talk today about our VH7B video wall lineup, which we have codenamed Clover. Um, it actually comprises a family of products. So with that said, let's get going. You can see here on this little product lineup roadmap chart that we have, we have a number of video wall offerings today. Uh, they're on the left-hand side of this uh, slide. We have the starting in the 47-inch range. We have the 47LV35A, which, uh, much like its larger brother, the 55LV35A, is our entry-level video wall. It's kind of your classic uh, electronics package, daisy chains over DVI. You spread a single 1080p image across as many screens as you have in your array, and it works. It's simple, and it's easy to use. Uh, it's definitely more cost-effective. We also have the 49WV50, which is a similar brightness, similar size product. Um, again, is a 500-nit product. It's a fairly simple uh, connectivity, and it's a little more advanced electronics package than the LV35A, but it's there, and it works very, very well for what it is. Um, fast forward a little bit now when we get into our 55LV75A and the LV77A. Both of those share an electronics package much more advanced than the LV35. It gives us DisplayPort support, also gives us access to DisplayPort 1.2 multi-stream transport, which enables uh, the connection of up to four screens to a single DisplayPort cable, and just has a lot more features going for it. Uh, it comes in both 500 and 700 nit line. The 700 nit line also has our shine-out film on the front surface of the display. That shine-out film allows for the rejection of some ambient light as well as uh, the commingling of the ambient light to enhance the contrast in brightly lit areas. The first product we'll be replacing with our new Clover models is the 700-nit LV77A. will be replaced um, very shortly, actually, at the end of October into early November time frame with the 55VH7B. Uh, that gives us the same the same brightness panel, the same treated uh, front surface, but shrinks to the overall bezel-to-bezel -bezel measurement, that is, the two edges combined of a single panel next to each other, down to less than two millimeters, roughly 1.8, although we don't have the final spec quite yet. Um, also supports some additional features that we can talk about, um, namely the ability to do a 4K signal across any size array, uh, you simply feed a 4K signal into the first panel via display port, and it carries through to all the other displays seamlessly. Uh, in the December time frame, we'll have that same product available in a 500-nit range in the 55-inch size, as well as you'll notice a shift to the 49-inch size from 47. 
Um, the reason for the size shift is quite simple. Our mother glass comes in on 98-inch sheets. If you cut a 98-inch sheet up into quarters, you have a 49-inch panel. So uh, fast forwarding a little bit now, you'll also see the 700-inch version of the 49-inch coming out in the first quarter of next year. These products all also feature our WebOS uh, operating system, which is our smart signage platform. We'll get into that in a little more detail shortly. So here's some of the key differences between the LV77A and the VH7B model. You can see that we have a bezel to bezel size of 3.5 millimeter on the LV77, where the new VH7B is less than two millimeters. We still use display port in and out. Previously though, with the LV77, you could only do a 4K content up to a two by two array using multi-street transport. Now we'll be able to, we've tested it over a hundred screens via daisy chain. You'll notice also the weight is slightly reduced, um, and that really makes a huge difference. We've gone from about 23 kilograms to 20 kilograms, or 50.7 uh, pounds, down to 44, just under 45 pounds, a little over 44. Why that matters, 45 pounds is one of those magical OSHA weights um, for this particular size and proportion object. It's considered an awkward object to handle, and if it's above 45 pounds, you need three people to do the installation. Because we're under 45 pounds, you can do it with two people. That reduces your cost of deployment. You'll notice how we've enhanced our HDCP, which is High Definition Digital Content Protection, as well as added some other features like LAN-based daisy chaining. So no longer do you have to do a single network drop per screen. It's now one network drop per array. Uh, that's a pretty big cost savings. We also have the capability of accepting an HD base T receiver. And uh, we've enhanced the way the natural mode works in the screen, which is your federal compensation. So some of the key differences or, or key things that set the LG video walls apart is our horizontal viewing angle is actually drastically improved over the other technology which is utilized, which is vertical alignment. So IPS and vertical alignment on a spec sheet will both list 170 degree viewing angle. However, usually in the fine print of a VA panel, it will say that that 178 degree viewing angle is at a contrast ratio of greater than 10 or greater than 5 or greater than 20, meaning that the contrast ratio could drop as low as 5, 10, or 20 to 1 at the extreme edges of your viewing angle, whereas with an IPS panel, our viewing angle remains consistent throughout the entire viewing space of the screen. You can kind of see this here in our reference site photograph from Incheon Airport in Korea. This is the people movers that go underneath the taxiway, very similar to what we have in Chicago O'Hare here in the United States, for those who are familiar. You can see that the image, depend, you know, irrespective of the angle, continues pretty, uh, pretty cleanly throughout the, the entire viewing cone. This is especially important when you're dealing with a video wall because you can never know when your vertical half-luminance angle is going to be hit. What a vertical half-luminance angle is, is basically the point at which half of the available light coming out of the backlight no longer can be seen by the viewer. That results in screens being dim, looking dim, looking washed out, just not looking like a very clean uh, installation. Video walls, by and large, tend to go up very high. Uh, they're generally not at direct eye level. Uh, and even if they are, you can't necessarily control what that viewing cone is going to be. You're going to have people standing you know, within just a few feet of it. You're going to have people standing 20 or 30 feet away. A VA panel, the viewing cone tends to drop off at around the uh, six or so foot height, around two meters. Uh, whereas an IPS, it begins to drop off quite a bit higher than that at about uh, two and a half meters. However, the drop off is not as drastic as a VA panel. So most of the public and most of the people uh, that view this never pick up on the fact that the brightness is slightly decreasing. So it's another advantage of the IPS panel technology and something that we're very proud of in our Clover models are how we've improved our local dimming technology. Uh, we're up to 16 zones of localized dimming, so there are basically 16 segments of the backlight array in the panel. These are direct lit LED panels, so we can actually, if you have, say, a moonrise in the upper left corner of your screen and the rest of the screen is black, only that area where the moon is being displayed will have the backlight on. It results in a much cleaner, uh, higher contrast image. You'll also have much less heat uh, heat dissipation. It, when you're standing in front of one of our competitor screens and in front of an LG screen, uh, we've actually measured this at a few of the Florida area airports in their test environments. 
the average temperature drop for an LG screen is right around 7 to 9 degrees. So if you take 7 to 9 degrees and you multiply that by a 3 by 3, so 9 screens, or even a 4 by 4, so 16 screen video wall, that's a considerable amount of heat that you're not putting into your operating environment. That means that your cooling system doesn't have to absorb that extra heat. It means that the actual user doesn't have to sit in front of that really warm screen basically sitting underneath the heat lamp for the entire day. We also have this neat feature of smart energy savings. What we can do is uh, because of the way that IPS displays a truer, richer color, we can actually decrease the backlight by 60 to 80 percent using the smart energy savings and boost the color saturation point. So when you do these two things, the to the average user, there is no perceived difference in brightness of the image. Everything still looks rich and, and fully colored, but you're actually using considerably less backlight, which translates to up to a 47% power savings, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, this kind of shows a little bit of the thermal test imaging results. If you take a, a VA panel, which is on the left, versus an IPS panel, which is on the right, and you basically run them in a test environment, You'll notice that after just a few minutes, the VA panel is considerably warmer than the IPS panel, and it stays that way. Uh, this is the result of how the VA panels actually work, how the underlying electronics and chemistry work for that particular type of liquid crystal versus IPS. So here's some of the enhancements we made in our natural mode. Uh, previously, our bezels, as pretty much everyone else's video wall bezels in the market, were offset. You had one side which was slightly thicker than the other side. Uh, in the case, we're a 3.5 millimeter product. One of the edges was 2.3 millimeters. The other edge was 1.2. This was to allow for ease of connection to the panel for the signaling cables to make everything run and make an image on the screen. Uh, that's all well and good, but it made alignment a little more tricky. It could be, at least. Uh, with the advent now of our VH7B product, we've shrunk that down. It's going to be a uniform bezel at less than 2 millimeters thick. Uh, another feature that we have is this image gap reduction. Because of the way that a screen draws in the image when it's drawing a video, it starts at the top and it scans downward. What can actually happen is if you have two panels, like it is depicted in this picture, and you have a fast-moving object, whether that's a MotoGP racer, whether that's a soccer ball, uh, some other kind of fast-moving object right along the center line of the screen, the bottom screen will be a frame or two advanced at the top of the screen versus the top screen's bottom portion. It results in uh, some screen tearing. The, the ball won't look like it's perfectly lined up. The, you know, the top portion of the MotoGP rider is, uh, is a little bit lagging behind the bottom portion. Uh, we actually have a new image scaling algorithm you can turn on that basically reverses the scan direction. So the bottom screen draws from the bottom up. The top screen draws from the top down still. But they both finish drawing at the same point in the screen, so those two edges will line up much more cleanly. Uh, one thing that we've done, too, we've taken a look at our packaging, and while it did meet all standards, there's always room for improvement. We've uh, taken a look at our uh, packaging stress, and by adding in a third layer of foam, a third piece, anytime you put packaging stress now on the top or bottom of the box, it actually redistributes that force through the foam to the opposite side. So anytime you have an impact on the top, it's going to push through to the bottom. Anytime it's on the bottom, it's going to push through to the top. And it's not going to put any of those in, any of those forces to work inside the LCD module. Video wall panels are, by nature, more fragile than non-video wall panels simply because they have no plastics to surround them. They are going to be more fragile. It's just the nature of video walls. Another key advantage of the VA versus IPS technology IPS panels will not go isotropic. Isotropic is when you've heated up that liquid crystal to the point where it cannot operate anymore. It can't open, it can't close, it just goes completely black. A VA panel, this happens generally right around 85 degrees Celsius or 167 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, real world applications, anytime you have any kind of lighting in place, um, whether you know, I've had some retail deployments where they've replaced static signage with some dynamic video signage, but they left their spotlights on. And the result was it baked the VA panels to the point of failure, where the IPS panels were simply running quite happily. Uh, IPS panels will mock isotropic up to uh, about 110 degrees Celsius or 230 degrees Fahrenheit. 
that's past the boiling point of water. And to be honest, if your screens are that warm, you probably have other problems. IPS also gives you a better image over time. You can see from our competitor's product on the left versus our IPS panel on the right. Um, that is caused by a either a thermal buildup or an ionization buildup over time. If you use the screens for extended periods of time near their saturation temperature, nearing meaning near the top point of which their thermal tolerance will support, um, they start to degrade. The transistor that drives the liquid crystal heats up. As it heats up, it draws more power. As it draws more power, it heats up more and it starts to affect its neighbors and then Nothing really works quite as efficiently as it should, and the net result is all of these gray smudges and smears in front of you. Uh, IPS does not run into that as easily. Some of the key improvements we've made over time, uh, because of the way that IPS spreads light in a more even manner, we're able to achieve um, up to 90% edge uniformity, meaning that the edges of your screen will appear to be the same tone up to about 90% of the brightness of the center of your screen. Our competitors, because they use a VA or vertically aligned panel, are able to achieve, achieve between 70 and 80 percent because VA is not as efficient as spreading light as um, IPS is. Uh, we're also improving our factory calibration. Uh, basically, we're taking the panels and we're doing a batch level calibration uh, based around the core color temperature of our backlight, which is about 10,000 degrees Kelvin. And um, it just results in a cleaner product by the time it gets to uh, customers and end users. In the event that you do need a calibration, we have an easy calibration tool, SuperSign C. We use that in conjunction with um, a number of colorimetry probes, like a Spider 3, a Spider 4, or an x right display I or an x right I1 display pro, and it just simply works. It's pretty quick, it takes about three minutes a panel. A uh, key feature that we LG has been doing for a few years, but we haven't really spoken about all that much is our key circuit boards are treated with a conformal coated process. Uh, conformal coating is basically a clear insulating breathable varnish, uh, very similar to clear nail polish, just uh, a little bit different from that. And it protects the board during long exposure in, um, let's just say, unfriendly areas. So if you have a situation, say you have a deployment in Florida where there's a lot of salt in the air pretty much everywhere within Florida because they said it's surrounded by the ocean. Um, the conformal coating will help protect the key circuit boards from any kind of corrosive influence from whether it's salt or just simply high humidity. Uh, this is a process which is actually present in just about all of our commercial displays that we're offering for sale this year. A uh, couple of key improvements that we're doing. Uh, we added in the capability of accepting an OPS or open pluggable specification slot to the back of our displays. Uh, this can be made it up with a number of host devices, but the one that we're most ex excited about is HD Base T. If you are doing a video wall deployment, and chances are that you need to have some kind of media player or some kind of computer as your source, unless you want to have that computer in a uh, inaccessible location, you're typically limited to just you know between 10 and 15 feet away from your video wall. However, with the advent of HD Base-T, you're able to actually drive that video wall from up to 100 meters away, so about 330 feet. So your video wall can actually be, your video wall controller, your, your source can be at ground level, and your video wall can be, you know, five stories up on the side of a building. And it will work, and it will be um, controllable. Another thing we're offering with our clovers is the, these guide pin brackets. Uh, they get attached to the back of your screen to help improve your overall flatness. These are extremely useful if you are not using a fully articulating video wall solution. If you are using a fully articulating video wall mounting solution, um, these guide pins are not as useful because all of your adjustments then happen in the video wall mount. A couple of things we've done to continuously improve our products. Um, a few years ago, the industry asked basically all of the manufacturers to remove the control buttons from their video wall products because they generally cannot be accessed once they're installed and it was seen as just kind of a waste of space. Fast forward to this uh, past year and we received numerous uh, requests to add our video wall buttons back. So here they are. We have a full set of buttons on the back of our products including uh, power input source menu, your directional select as well as your settings button. Uh, as I've already stated, we've reduced the weight and depth and we've actually classified our inputs and output ports. So all of our inputs are the same uh, white on black scheme that you can see in this photograph, and all of our outputs now are labeled as a green on black. 
Uh, makes them very simple to reference, very easy during the installation. Something else we've gone and done is actually increased the length of all of the cables which are included in the box. LG includes all of the basic cables you need to do a video wall deployment in the box. In the case of our LV35 product, uh, you get a display port, I'm sorry, a DVI cable, an RS-232 or serial cable, a power cable, a remote control sensor, and a remote control. In the case of our LV75, LV77, and our Clover units, you get all of those same cables except your DVI cable switched out for a display port cable. And moving forward with our Clover models, we're actually increasing the length of the display of the cables that are included up to two meters. So previously, our RS-232 cable is a meter and a half, and our display port cable is 1.8 meters or six feet. We found that these cables are adequate, but they were almost too short, depending on how they were routed and how they were restrained during an installation. So we decided to increase that length just a little bit and make everybody's lives a little easier. Controllability. Um, LG is pretty well known for having consistent control codes. The base 10 or so commands really haven't changed. I started working with LG products approximately 15 years ago in some of their commercial CRTs. Uh, the supported serial control, the command to turn them on was KA01. The command to turn on our most advanced, newest display today is KA01. It hasn't changed in 15 years. So our folks at Crestron and Kramer, or Extron and AMX really like this. You can load a basic code library and it will pretty much just work. Uh, one of the other things we've done now is added in the capability of our Clover models of having land-based daisy chain. Um, previously, you'd have to drop a single network line for absolutely every screen in a video wall just to be able to control them over a network. And that gives you the capability to do firmware updates. It's a much, more, it's a much faster response time on the control than serial will ever be. Plus, it's getting harder and harder to find serial-based uh, computers. By adding in LAN daisy chain capability, you're able to connect the screen up via LAN and uh, control it by passing the signal from one screen to another just using a simple and inexpensive, you know, CAT5 or CAT6 network cable. We've improved our system on chip and our screens. Uh, they can use either our SuperScience software or also our um, WebOS operating system. WebOS, for those who may not be familiar with it, started off life as Palm OS. HP acquired those rights from Palm. Uh, fast forward a few years, and LG acquired those from HP because we realized exactly how powerful the platform was. We built it into a number of our consumer devices, including smart televisions and smart home theater systems, from there into some of our hospitality sets to give that same home, home look and feel that our customers were looking for. And then we realized just how powerful it was and can actually utilize it in as a commercial digital signage platform in our commercial displays. And this is where I'm going to hand it back over to Steve. Excellent, Chris. Thank you so much for walking us through our new, fantastic, beautiful, very convenient Clover model in the VH7B. Uh, before I go ahead and, uh, and take it over from here, Chris, I want to go ahead and open it up for some questions. Uh, so, everybody, if you could, please use your chat box or you can raise your virtual hand, and I will unmute you, and you can ask Chris a question. So if you could please go ahead and ask a question via chat or raise your hand virtually, and I will unmute you. In the hand, you'll see the icons to your far right. you see different tools over there you should be able to raise your virtual hand. You know what, Chris? I, I think maybe you're just so thorough that everyone has all the information that they need that you've just blown them away. And so you've left them speechless, and you were so thorough that they, they got it. What do you think? Are I, you still there with I, 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 I guess that's just the case then. <laughs> You know, here here goes some – all right, here's some comments coming through. All right, so um, Tom says great information, so you did do a great job, Chris. We're also getting – well, how much does this cost? All right, so, you know, cost pricing, we're, we're still getting that determined at this time. 
so we don't have that information for you, but we appreciate that feedback of uh, the great information and uh, <laughs> getting a little boo there. You know, sorry about that. You know, I mean, this is going to be launching very shortly here. So we're looking at the, uh, Chris had mentioned, we're looking at the October to November time frame. And so at that time, we will make sure that we have all of that pricing available for you. All right, and let me just make sure we don't have any virtual hands up here. All right. Well, hey, everyone, thank you for your feedback, and thank you again for joining us. If you have any other questions, please go ahead and, you know, you can write them down or, you know, go ahead and raise your hand, and, you know, Chris or I will see that and unmute you so you can ask that question. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and move forward for a few more minutes here and give you a quick run-through of our new 27-inch NC67 small format monitor. So just as you see here, this is our new 4K monitor. Some of you might uh, recall our new 31-inch monitor that, um, that, was, that was actually our first 4K, our, excuse me, our first 4K small format monitor in that 31 inch, we launched that, uh, actually it was this year, it was the beginning of this year, I'm thinking next year, because we're already almost to 2016, but it was actually in the beginning of this year when we launched that 31 inch. It's done very well for us, and actually we'll be talking about that later on as well, but you know, the market has called for, hey, you know, it would be great to have a 27 inch, and that's what we have here. So, you know, having the ultra high definition uh, resolution is certainly helping our, our graphic designers, our videographers out there. Um, and also, you know, this has actually been created a little bit for our gamers out there. Um, as, you know, we all do work during the day, but we also do like to play. So we like to share not only the great uh, commercial ability of working with the different computer graphics and things, but a lot of times, you know, as our work calls for, well, these, that, those, that would use our small format monitors with this 27-inch 4K monitor, it's very important about the actual viewing, the visibility. And that's why we're showing a lot of these different graphics of showing little gaming ability. This here is, again, touting our IPS technology, but also our, the sRGB, over 99% of it, and with the factory calibration, um, has it within this monitor. This, just as we mentioned with our Clover model, this has the IPS technology that you still would have those super wide viewing angles. Even though this is a desktop monitor, oftentimes those that work in the video industry, they will have multiple monitors on their desktop. Many of us will have two, right? But when you're working in the, you know, graphic design and such, we're talking about more than two, sometimes four and such. And so to still have a great super wide viewing angle still becomes a necessity and very important. Now, as I mentioned, you know, many times so far, you know, when we're working with videos here. So it's very important, of course, that you don't have any stuttering. Everything is just very fluid and just looks like it's almost real. You get that with the great resolution of the ultra-high definition, but also with the additional features of our free sync technology is keeping everything together and free-flowing. Uh, great monitor. Uh, this, you know, we can always talk to these slides, but certainly with the small format monitors, you know, seeing is truly believing. So, so you know, I definitely ask. Thank you. So pick one up and then try it out for yourself, and you will see that you will be blown away by it. Again, showing you uh, some visuals of the gaming, but the important thing here is with gamers and also our videographers, you want to make sure as you're connecting to different sources that there is no impact, input lag at whatsoever. So you have different sources, and you want to make sure that everything is very fluid and you don't have any lag whatsoever, and that's what you have here. Okay. Now, especially, you know, creating different films in the industry, or even, you know, just the videos themselves, you have different dark scenes and such. Well, you know, sometimes in our consumer TVs, uh, 
a regular consumer TV that is going on the black screen, you're not able to see as much. But what we have here with our 27-inch 4K monitor, those dark screens, when you have to do some video editing, you are able to see clearly and through any of the uh, special effects that you might have going on during the scene, and you're able to make those adjustments that to the regular eye, to the naked eye on a consumer TV might not be able to see. So, again, this is a, a very important feature uh, in that black stabilizer. Uh, going back into speaking on our 4K, you know, this is uh, you have 60 hertz per frame. So 4K at 60 hertz per frame is what you have here. You have a little side-by-side -side comparison. Seeing on the left, what that's 30 hertz is, and then on the right, you know, seeing the 60, per, 60 hertz per frame, how uh, much of a difference that that does make. And that is via HDMI. Also, here's a look at uh, the actual inputs there on the monitor. So you will find the inputs on the bottom of the monitor, and you will see here that it actually does swivel. So it does swivel to the left and right, 45 degrees to the left, 45 degrees to the right, and it does tilt up and it tilts down as well as you can adjust the height to. Now, if that wasn't enough, how about even rotating it to make it go in portrait land, uh, port, portrait um, operation. So not only landscape, but you can also put it in portrait mode too. Let's take a final look at some of the specs here. So as mentioned, it is a 27-inch 4K resolution, so 3840 by 2160 um, with the IPS technology that gives you already the anti-glare that comes built in our IPS technology. Uh, you do have flicker safe as well on the monitor, so that makes sure that, I, so, you know, this would definitely everyone can relate to. So flicker safe, you know, when you're working on a monitor for a long time and, you know, let's say it could be even a four, like four hours, sometimes what will happen, you'll start to get a headache. Well, that doesn't happen with our monitors because of our IPS technology and also because of this flicker safe uh, feature. This makes sure that you don't get that, that headache that often happens to many of us that, uh, well, that happened to me before I had my LG monitor, but it certainly was the case. So that is our 27-inch, and this is the information where you can reach out to Chris and myself. And some of you might have some questions that have now come up on the VH7B. I want to give you an opportunity to ask some questions on that. Or maybe you have some questions on that 27-inch 4K monitor that we just went over. Please, at this time, go ahead and start queuing up your questions via chat or virtual box there. Raise your hand, and I will unmute you. And as all of that is being queued up, I want you to go ahead and take an opportunity to review our up-and-coming future Spotlight Solution webinar series that we have that will be going on in the following month. So we have October 13th, November 10th, and also December. So we're going to finish out the year continuing to have in our Solution Spotlight webinar series, um, and you will be able to register for them right away. Hopefully you were able to do that already as you registered for this one. All right. Now, a lot of information came to you guys. Did a lot of talking. What questions do you have for us? Any at all? Okay. You know, it's a Tuesday. You know, all of us are quite busy. So I, I don't want to just keep you for the sake of keeping you. As I mentioned, you know, we will have this recording that will be sent out to you so you can share with your other colleagues and customers. You have our information on the screen, so feel free to reach out to us uh, via email and ask any questions that you may have, and we will be more than happy to get you those answers. And for whatever reason, if we didn't have the answer, we will make sure that we get that answer for you. 
You will find both of these products. They will be on our website. Uh, the 27 inches are actually already on lgsolutions.com. Our VH7B will be on our website in the near future. So be looking out for that. And make sure that you reach out to your local LG Enterprise account manager for any sales opportunities that you're looking for. Um, you know, they're definitely there to help you. Those are sales guys and women. They're our feet in the street, and they are there to bring the whole solution around for you. So on behalf of Chris and myself, we do thank you for joining us on this great Tuesday morning. We hope you have a fantastic rest of the week. And you take care. Thank you. Have a great day.